So guys, in previous video last Sunday on the 2013 Cross Trek Limited, there were a couple of things that kept coming up in the comments, a couple of questions. One of those was about the black oil filter I installed on this vehicle, and one was about the clear flood mode cranking. I've had lots and lots of questions and comments over the years whenever I talk about clear flood mode crank or demonstrate it in a video. So today's video, we're going to talk about the clear flood mode cranking, and we're going to talk about the black oil filters once again. Now, we've done a very in-depth video on the blue USA-made oil filters versus the black Japanese-made oil filters. I'll link that in the top corner here. But today, we're just going to go over a general overview for those of you that didn't see that original video, those new subscribers to the channel that we've picked up in the year since we've done that video, and talk more about clear flood mode crank. With that said, let's get into it. So starting off with the clear flood mode crank, a lot of you guys asked about what it is, how does it work, what Subarus does it work on, and why do I do it, what is it useful for? So clear flood mode crank is for, as far as I recollect, Subarus 2005 and newer, those with the electronic throttle bodies without a physical throttle cable. Now, I have heard from some of you viewers that previous models with the cable, certain ones do have the clear flood mode crank, but I cannot confirm. I've not tried it on any of the older ones. I've only done it on 05 and newer with the drive-by wire wireless throttle body. So what that is, is uh, you can crank your engine over while disabling your spark and your fuel to build oil pressure primarily. So I like to do this anytime I've done a head gasket replacement or done an engine reseal where I've completely drained the oil out, done a oil pump uh, replacement, oil pump reseal, resealed the oil pan, done head gaskets, anything like that. I like to do a clear flood mode crank just to build oil pressure up in the engine, circulate oil through the engine, get that pressurized oil into the cylinder head, lubricate all of the components of the cylinder head, the valve train, get it flowing through the system, get the system primed up before starting the engine because I don't want to start the engine and there not be oil in the, well, basically the entire engine. I don't want to have it start and, you know, take time while it's running at a higher RPM for that oil to be sucked into the pump, pressurized, and then pushed out to the engine. It's better to prime it beforehand so you don't cause any kind of premature wear. Now, this is a very simple procedure to do. All you have to do is put your foot and floor the gas pedal. Just pin it all the way to the floor and hold it there and then crank the car as normal. This disables the fuel system and the ignition system. As long as you hold the key on a keyed model, it's going to crank over. Now, if you're done, remove your foot, turn the key off, crank as normal. Now, I like to do this procedure when I do oil changes on the newer F-Series engines because the oil filter is top-mounted and you cannot pre-fill the filter. So I like to do that just to prime the filter, get oil in the filter, prime the oiling system. Uh, that way you don't have any kind of noise from the timing chains, no engine noise when you first start the engine because uh, it takes a while for that oil to get into the oil filter fillet and then get to the engine and you can have timing chain rattle, noises in the engine for a few seconds before that oil pressure builds up. Now, a lot of people have asked in the past as well, does this work with the push button ignition? And it absolutely does. It's basically the same procedure with the push button ignition. All you've got to do is the same thing. Foot on the gas pedal, pin it to the floor, push your start button. Your engine should start cranking and will continue to crank until you push the start button again and it stops it. Same procedure with the push button ignition as the keyed ignition. So uh, there you go, guys. Those of you that have asked about 
clear flood mode crank, what it's used for, how to do it, uh, there you go. Hopefully this answers all of you guys' comments and questions on the subject. Now we're gonna get into those black oil filters I put on this Crosstrek engine. So guys, again, I've covered this subject in depth in the video I linked up in the corner previously on why I refuse to install these blue USA made Subaru oil filters on the newer F-Series engines, primarily the FB25 and FB20. Now, if you go to your Subaru dealership, you're gonna get this blue filter. This is a genuine filter made in the USA for your Subaru engine. My problem with these filters are that they are made by Fram slash Honeywell, and they are of the crappiest of quality that Fram has been known for for the last couple of decades, where the filter element in here is low quality. The end caps of the filter media are glued on cardboard and the bypass valve and spring are just very cheap. The construction is very poor. Uh, there's excess glue in these things. I found rust inside of them, cutting them open, and they're just junk in my opinion. I refuse to use them. Now, in Japan, Subaru uses these black oil filters. Now, the part number for the USA filter is a 15208AA15A. The Japanese filter is a 15208AA160. You have to get these filters from Japan. I just restocked, as you see, got these in just last night, straight from Japan. Now, these Japanese filters are superior in every single way to the USA filter. Better filter media, more filter media. The actual filtration cartridge has steel end caps, a better bypass valve, a better spring, just all around a better designed, better efficiency oil filter than the USA one. Now, why do US Subaru dealers and why do US Subarus have the blue filter? Why don't you use the black filter? If you buy a new Subaru, you're gonna have this black filter on the Crosstrek, on the uh, BRZ, the WRX, the STI, all of the Japanese manufactured cars will come with this black filter. Now, if we're talking about turbocharged engines and stuff, that's out of the question. We're talking about naturally aspirated um, Subarus here. The turbocharged ones still use the black filter that are made in Japan for whatever reason. It's only the naturally aspirated that get this cheap blue USA made filter. So for whatever reason, Subaru of America has calculated that it's cheaper to have Fram slash Honeywell produce these filters in blue for them domestically than importing the black Tokyo Roki Japanese made filters. It's a money saving game. They're giving you cheap filters in the USA from Subaru of America, where Subaru Japan uses high quality Japanese filters. So uh, we talked again uh, in that video or another video, I think it's another video, I'll link that on counterfeit parts. Now you've gotta be very careful when you buy these filters, you have to buy them from a reputable brand because counterfeiting these parts is uh, getting more and more prevalent. So quick rundown for the genuine Japanese oil filters. This will be printed on the box. It will not be a sticker on the box. When you open the box, you will have these little dots of glue, not a strip of glue. Little dots of glue printed on label. The filter basically is the same dimensions. It's just gonna be black, and it's gonna have this little uh, cover, this little shrink wrap cover on the end of it, whereas the USA filter is uh, fully shrink wrapped. So just a quick rundown there, guys. Don't get had, don't buy uh, counterfeit oil filters. Uh, Amayama.com, JapanParts.com, two reputable Japanese retailers that sell and export Japanese genuine parts to the U.S. 
So there you go, guys. There is an explanation of why I use black Japanese oil filters on Subarus I own and those that I work on and why I spend the extra money to import oil filters rather than just using what the dealership has. So hopefully that answers all you guys' questions on that as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you all in the next one.